Have you ever wondered how tap bar controllers and navigation controllers do their work? Even though it may seem as if UI tap bar controller and UI navigation controller are magical classes, they are nothing more than UI view controller subclasses. What have these classes in common? Both classes allow you to insert custom content in the form of one or more view controllers. A navigation controller, for example, manages a stack of view controllers. You can push and pop view controllers onto and from a navigation stack. The same is true for a tab bar controller. It manages an ordered list of view controllers accessible through a tab bar at the bottom. Both UI navigation controller and UI tab bar controller are container view controllers. What does that mean? What are container view controllers? A container view controller manages a view, just like any other UI view controller subclass. In addition to managing a view, a container view controller also manages one or more child view controllers. It acts as the parent view controller of one or more child view controllers. The parent view controller is responsible for setting the size and position of the view of each child view controller. The view of the child view controller becomes part of the parent view controller's view hierarchy. The child view controller continues to be responsible for its own view hierarchy, and that is what gives container view controllers their power. A navigation controller, for example, is highly reusable thanks to the container view controller architecture. It knows how to manage a stack of view controllers, and it doesn't care what the child view controllers do. The same is true for a tab bar controller. A tab bar controller is aware of its child view controllers, but it doesn't know or care about their type or function. All it knows is how to manage them and navigate between them. But what are the benefits of container view controllers? Why should you use them? A key advantage of container view controllers is reusability. As I mentioned earlier, UIKit includes a number of UI view controller subclasses that are container view controllers, such as UI navigation controller, UI tab bar controller, and UI split view controller. Each of these classes implements a navigation paradigm that is commonly found in iOS applications. A UI split view controller instance, for example, presents a master view controller on the left and a detail view controller on the right. If the user taps an item in the master view controller, the item's details are shown in the detail view controller. The master and detail view controllers are both child view controllers of the split view controller. The mail application on iPad is a very good example of this. View controller containment makes it much easier to keep view controllers lean. Complex user interfaces no longer need to be managed by a single view controller. By using a container view controller, a user interface can be split up into logical or functional components, each managed by a view controller. This also makes it easy to deconstruct a user interface and reuse components in various parts of a project. It is easy or tempting to cram seemingly unrelated functionality to a single view controller, but this often leads to UI view controller subclasses that span hundreds or thousands of lines of code, and that is certainly not what you want. In this tutorial, I would like to show you how view controller containment can be used by creating a simple application that demonstrates the benefits of this pattern. You learn about the relationship of a container view controller and its children, and you also become familiar with the containment view controller API. The application we are about to create is going to be very simple in scope. It is a container view controller with two child view controllers, a summary view controller and a sessions view controller. You can switch between the two view controllers using a segmented control at the top. Open Xcode and create a new project based on the single view application template. Name the project view controller containment. Make sure that language is set to Swift and devices to universal. The first thing we're gonna do is rename the view controller that Xcode has already provided for us. We're gonna name it master view controller because this better illustrates the purpose of the view controller. We're gonna clean things up here a little bit and remove any code that we don't need. 
also rename the name of the file for the view controller. Next, as you saw in the preview, we're gonna have a segmented control at the top to switch between the view controllers, the child view controllers. So I'm gonna create a outlet for that segmented control. Now open the storyboard. We're gonna first change the class name of the view controller because we just renamed it to master view controller. We're gonna embed the view controller in a navigation controller like this. Let's organize this a little bit better. And we're going to add the segmented control for which we just created an outlet. And we're going to connect that outlet in the storyboard like this. If we now run the application in the simulator, you should just see a white screen with a segmented control at the top. Nothing fancy, but now we have something to work with. Next, we're going to create the child view controllers. So create two new files. They will be UI view controller subclasses. The first one is going to be the summary view controller. And the second one is going to be the sessions view controller. Add them to the storyboard. So create drag view controller from the object library, open the identity inspector and type summary view controller. Also make sure that you set the storyboard identifier to summary view controller. We will need that to load the view controller from the storyboard later. Select the view of the view controller and give it a bright color so that it's clear when we switch child view controllers, that it's clear that we are switching them. Add a second view controller, set the class to sessions view controller and the storyboard identifier to sessions view controller. Select the view and also give it a bright color, for example, blue. That's it. We won't be changing anything about the implementation that is not important for this exercise. So we're going to create a helper method in the view did load method. In this helper method, we're going to do some setup. The setup we need to do is setting up the segmented control and configuring it. I try to keep the view did load method as short as possible. So that's why I create a helper method here. In the setup segmented control method, we're going to configure the segmented control. This means removing any existing segments and inserting the segments that we want, which is summary and session, sessions, summary at index zero and sessions at index one. We also need a action that is triggered when the user taps the segmented control. This action is gonna be selection did change it's taking one argument, the segmented control itself. And we're going to add the view controller, the master view controller, as a target. And the method, of course, that's going to be invoked is selection that change for the event value changed. So when the user taps the segmented control, this selection that change method is invoked. And finally, we're going to set the selected segment index to zero. We're going to create another helper method, update view. In this view, we're going to update the view as the name implies when the selection was changed by the user. I'll explain later what exactly that entails. We are now going to add the child view controllers. There are several ways we can instantiate the child view controllers. We can add lazy properties to the master view controller class, or we can set the child view controllers up when the master view controller is initialized. I personally prefer to use lazy properties because it instantiates the child view controllers when they are needed. If the user never taps the session segment, for example, then there's no need to instantiate an instance of the sessions view controller class. 
Lazy properties let us do this. So we start with the summary view controller. We use a lazy keyword. It is of course of type summary view controller. The first thing we do is we load the storyboard, the main storyboard from the bundle. And we then invoke on the storyboard object the instantiate view controller with identifier method. And we pass in the correct identifier. Note that we force cast the instance to summary view controller because we need to return a summary view controller instance from this closure. And we then invoke add view controller as child view controller. That is another helper method that we will implement shortly. This method will add the summary view controller as a child view controller to the container view controller. And of course, we return the view controller instance at the end of the closure. We do the same for the sessions view controller. All we need to do is change the type and change the property name. And of course the identifier in the storyboard. Let's now take a look at the add view controller as child view controller method. Let me copy this first, the method signature. So we're going to create a private helper method. And in this method, we will see what the API looks like for view controller containment. The type of the parameter is UI view controller. And the first thing we need to do is tell the container view controller that we're going to add a child view controller. We do that by invoking add child view controller on the container view controller. In the next step, we add the child view controller's view as a sub view to the view of the container view controller. We then set the frame of the child view controller's view. We use an auto resizing mask here to make sure that it has the correct frame. And last but not least, we notify the child view controller that it is added to a container view controller. We do that by invoking did move to parent view controller on the child view controller. So that is all we need to do to add a child view controller to a container view controller. The last thing we need to do is implement the update view method. In this method, we show or hide the child view controller that is currently selected. This means we check the currently selected segment index and display the view of the appropriate child view controller. We also need to invoke update view in the setup view method to make sure that the summary view controller is shown when the application is launched. If we then run the application in the simulator, you can see that everything is working as expected. Even though it is not applicable for this tutorial, I want to show you what is involved to remove a child view controller from a container view controller. So the first thing we need to do is implement another helper method. I will call this one remove view controller as child view controller. And it also takes a UI view controller instance as its parameter. The first thing we need to do is tell the child view controller that it is about to be removed from its parent view controller by invoking will move to parent view controller and passing in nil as the argument. We then remove the view of the child view controller from its super view, which is the view of the container view controller. And finally, we invoke remove from parent view controller on the child view controller. That is all it takes to remove a child view controller from its parent view controller. You may be wondering what we gain by using a container view controller. Why can't we add the child view controller's view to any view controller? There is a very good reason for doing so. Open summary view controller.swift and implement view will appear and add a breakpoint. If we run the application, you will see that the breakpoint is hit. Okay, that is what we expect. If we now open masterviewcontroller.swift and we comment any calls to the view controller containment APIs and we run the application again, we notice that the breakpoint is not hit. This means that 
Even though we can see the summary view controller, the view will appear method is not called. By adding a view controller as a child view controller to a container view controller, the latter forwards messages related to appearance to its children. This is a key aspect of view controller containment. If the view of a child view controller is added to another view controller's view, without using the view controller containment APIs, the child view controller is not notified about events related to appearance. This means that messages such as view did appear and view did disappear are never sent to the child view controller. This could cripple the view controller and maybe even lead to memory leaks. So if you add a view controller to another view controller as a child view controller, make sure that you use the view controller containment APIs.